All right, welcome back to another Ryobi video. Now this is definitely not comprehensive because we've got two tools out of Ryobi's huge lighting range here. And actually Ryobi have released a couple of new um, lights. They have, there's actually a new variant of this one here that we're about to is use. It? Very, very nice. minor improvements to nice it. Nice one. But essentially these are the two lights that we've been using in the garage around the home for, well this light here is from 2018. So this is the last four years. This is 2019. Okay, so we've been using that one for three years. So they have actually lasted a, uh, a pretty decent amount of time. I find from these two lights, the one that you're holding is the, uh, the one that we definitely get the most use out of. Yeah, so this one here, if you use a five amp hour battery, it will do 11 hours runtime, yep. only if one of the lights is running. So this has got two lights. Obviously, you put two lights on, you're half your runtime. Yeah, and this one here, you get a lot of runtime because the lumens in this is a lot less. Yeah, you're 850 lumens on here, 330 on the high setting of this one. But if you're on the low setting, you can get 70 hours of use out of this. So, I mean, this is really good to kind of set and forget. It could be used in camping situations. You get a lot of runtime, but it's because it's a lot less bright than the one you've got in your hands at the moment. So this is the Ryobi Hybrid Shop Light. This puts out 850 lumens if you have it extended with both of the lights going. You can articulate it to 270 degrees, and I find that it is quite handy to use on a bench like so. You've got your power button at the bottom. On the front, you've got quite a nifty feature. If you slide this open, you can actually plug a cable into there and you can run this off mains power so you don't need to use battery at all. When you do have your battery attached to the machine, and this is a five amp hour battery that we have right here, what you can then do is press the button once to light up both sides of the uh, light. Once we'll turn one bank off and that will give you the 11 hours total runtime off a five amp hour battery. Press it again, it will switch to the other side. Press it again and it turns off. And another good feature on this tool here is that if you're working in like a garage shop type environment, there's a couple of hooks on the back where you can pull it out and you can hang it upside down. Yep, so you can use that there. You can hang the light at the same time. You can open it up and you can use it in a whole bunch of different fashions. You do have another hook on the other end as well. So you could mount this above cabinetry. You've got a lot of different options where this is really versatile. The other way that you can mount this as well is it does have a hook that retracts. It's on a, uh, it's on a spring on the top there. So you can hang it this way here. You could have your tool open. You could hang it that way there. Or you could use these mounting points here, one on the top, one on the bottom, and you could hang it in that fashion. So you've got lots of different mounting options. So we've got the Ryobi area light here. Now this on its lower setting puts out 80 lumens. On its highest setting is 330 lumens. It only has two settings, but one of the nifty features of this light is you do have USB charging on the side. Now it is only a one amp output. So think of the small chargers that you get with iPhones when you used to get charged with iPhones, they were five amp chargers. So this is not going to put out power at a great rate of knots, but it is something quite handy to have on the light. If we put the battery on there, what we do have in terms of options, press it once, we've got our low setting. Now that low setting will give us 70 hours of runtime on the five amp hour battery. Press it again. Sorry, I've got that wrong. That's our low setting. That's our high setting. So the highest setting will give us 20 hours of runtime on the five amp hour battery. The lower setting will give us 70 hours of runtime on that setting there. The illumination on there is not very high. We're on 80 lumens here, 330 on the high, but just like the other light, we do have a hook at the top. It's not quite as versatile. It does swivel though, and we can hang that and use it in a fashion like this, or you can leave that on a bench top. One of the things that we do find with this light is it is not very directional. So it is more illuminating around both sides versus being concentrated like the other light where we can angle it in the way where we need the light dispersed. Okay, so we just had to wait for a couple of hours for it to get dark in here, but I will just show you, first of all, this is the, this is the smaller light of the two. This is more of like the camping style type light. I'll put it on the paint here and you can kind of see that is it the first push or the second push? Ah, so the first push will give us, I suppose, maximum brightness. And I mean, sure, if you're gonna use this for detailing to get scratches out of your paint and stuff, it's probably not the best thing for you to buy, but it will get it done if this is all you've got available in the garage. I'll come around, I'll turn the lights off completely dark and you can sort of see how much light it will disperse, I suppose, and fill the room with light. 
not a whole lot. I mean, we're getting some illumination a little way across the garage. But if you go and turn that other light on. Oh, I'll comparison. show you what it's like with the second setting. It's pretty pointless, but that's it. That's half. So that's a setting that you can eat 70 hours. Yeah. 70 hours in that garage like that. This, this, this is the light you use when you go camping. And then if I swap this round and we use the other light. So that's it on full strength. And this is the fashion that we use this when we're detailing as well. We generally set it up like this against the paint and then we can follow that line away from the car as well. So it's quite handy because with the coverage that you get, because it is quite high, you can go and study that whole panel by just leaving it sitting on something like the, uh, the crate that we've got it sitting there on. And then you're just really moving your head up and down to inspect paint on the car if you're using it in a fashion for detail. And I'll show you what it does when it fills the room. It's much better, it's more substantial I think. It is, and then you've got the ability to change the direction of that light as well and concentrate it exactly where you're wanting it, which is quite nice. And that's it with just one light on. So we'll show you what this, uh, what this looks like when hanging this light as well, because it's got quite a couple of, well quite a few different mounting options that are quite handy. So using these top hooks, you can sort of hang it off, I guess bits and pieces that you have available in your garage. We've done this before and it's smashed, but uh, you know, so if you had the car, I guess if you pulled the car in here and you put it under here, this would be perfect for the roof and I can show you what that's like with, no, with the lights out. That's quite handy too under cabinetry, you're using it on a workshop bench actually. That's putting out a pretty decent amount of light for just the source of that. The amount of light that we're getting in this garage, like you could, I wouldn't say comfortably work underneath that, but you could, uh, you could get some work done right here. That's, uh, it's added quite a bit of illumination to the garage. And then when we swap it out for this one, it's not that stable. I wouldn't recommend you do that for full time. Yeah, I mean that just adds some background light. It's definitely not task lighting, right? Look at the ground there. Can and you can definitely see the two difference. So that's your difference in your lumens. The other fashion that these are really handy as well, so obviously you've got the mounting hooks to put them on things like the roof, but when you're working in the engine bay of the car, even in a pretty well lit garage, it is quite handy to be able to use them under the, uh, under the hood. So we'll show you how we typically would use them in there. Now our videos aren't typically this dark. We would uh, we'd never normally film in this kind of lighting, but for the purposes of this video. So here I've got the lantern style light. And yeah, sure, you could put that on. It's just not very concentrated, the light on there. Pieces, you know, it disperses yeah. light in, yeah. Or you can hook it up here, I guess. Uh, maybe uh, not. The hook's not really long, it's not wide enough not on wide there, enough is it, in order to, to do But I mean, if you could get that to hook on there, this is definitely not the light that I'd be choosing for under here. No, I think the one that we'd generally go for here would be the hybrid light. Because what you can do is you can set it. So you could sit that there, you can then concentrate a light in a particular area. Yeah, this light is definitely more versatile than the other one. And then if you did have the ability where you could pinpoint a couple of holes, or you, you could even make your own style type hook. And you could hook that up underneath there if you had. Yeah, and I mean, look at the amount of light you get on the engine bay now to work versus the other one. This is such a versatile light because you can use it in that uh, in that fashion, and you can also rest on something like you had it sitting on the uh, the intake down here before. So I put the lantern style light in here in the center console of the car, and um, it, uh, it lights it up. But I suppose if you were going to use this, if you were going to detail in the in the dark. I mean, that's alright if you're going to sit in there and you're going to do a bit of a general wipe down. Definitely not now. Now it's pretty terrible. You're bringing that light out when you're sitting outside and you've lost your keys or you've lost something under We have the, uh, used this light before to sort of light up certain areas when we've been filming and stuff. It sort of helps to, I guess, create a little bit more light. But then when I use the, um, when you use this other bigger light, this is definitely... Oh, it's because you can point the light where you need it when you're using this.
It just has the ability to fill the area with more light, essentially. It does, and I mean, you can go there and you can go, look, we want some more light down in this area, and you can just tilt it. This is a really, really versatile light. We've said that many times, but. And at first glance, it looks like the one that won't be the best, right? I mean, you look at that and you go, oh no, it doesn't quite right. It doesn't have the, the typical light shape to it. It looks a bit awkward, it looks a bit big, it looks a bit bulky. But let me tell you, that is the choice of light that we would recommend. And that's the one we typically use the most for the sort of use cases that you've seen just now. And it's nice that you can go and actually plug a cable in there and get continuous power to it. However, on that setting right there with the battery that we've got on there, the five amp hour battery, you're going to get six hours of use which I think is pretty fantastic. And if you go and press that button on there and you switch it back to just one light, you're gonna get 11 hours. So run time is fantastic with the ability to plug in as well and have continuous running. All right, so that's a really quick wrap up of two of the lights in Ryobi's collection. Well, two of the lights in our collection. Ryobi have probably a dozen plus different lights that you can select. So it would be a big video if we went and bought all of those and, and compared them. But I think out of the two that we've had experience with, I know the one that I would be going for would be the one that you've got in your hands. And this tool's what, $139? $139, this one here's 79 New Zealand dollars. I think it's an absolute no brainer for the extra versatility you get out of that one there. And the fact that you can mount it, you can, aim the light where you want it and it's almost double was double and a half bright as this on its brighter setting i think that's a no-brainer i think if you're using this in the garage setting you know you're using it for detailing a car you're in the engine bay or around tools or whatever this is the choice for you yep if you're going to use this for more sort of generic type light you know if you're at a barbecue or if you're camping then the more lantern type style is, is, is the choice for you probably. i think so there are a few other lights in roby's range that i would like to try out but i think if i was going out today and buying only one light i would definitely go this one here and to be honest even if i was buying multiple lights I'll probably leave this one alone. I wouldn't buy this. It is handy to have, but I don't think it's essential. So not the most exciting video showing off a couple of lights, but we're hoping that you got some value out of it. And if we could add some value, it would be the fact that that light there is absolutely fantastic and we'd highly recommend you buy it. If you're interested in any other Ryobi tools, make sure you check out the playlist on the channel. We have checked out probably a dozen, if not more, 20 actually, 20 plus now. Nice one. So we've done a lot of Ryobi We're getting through videos. the Ryobi catalogue, aren't we? We sure are. Ooh. We're going to be running out soon. So make sure you check out that playlist on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you hit subscribe to stay tuned for the latest from Omni Garage, and we'll see you guys in the next one.